you for coming back for another inside look with the cast and crew from Studio 220 Films movie, The First Step. Now today we have our first glimpse at one of our actors who is played by John Frederick and he plays the role of Pastor Brian. He is also one of our producers. Thank you so much for joining me today, John. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Okay, so let us know, how did you get involved in this project? I think you go a little further back than some of our actors. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's funny because it's, it's been a while, so I can't really remember where I saw uh, Jerry's breakdown. I don't know if it was on backstage or maybe uh, in an acting group on Facebook. Uh -huh. I can't remember exactly, but I saw it, and uh, I, I love doing stuff you know locally helping local filmmakers you okay. know trying to help the uh the film industry grow in this area so i uh i sent an email uh, uh, jerry had, had put an email in the thing so i sent him an email and said hey i'd like to apply for the role of pastor brian and he wrote back and said great uh who are you <laughs> so, <laughs> so <okay>. you guys <laughs> didn't know each other <laughs> no I, I'd, I'd never even heard of jerry actually okay and uh because he was just kind of getting started now, he's got a long history in the you know kind of filming world but not with uh like feature films right stuff like that uh so i told him about my background sending my resume uh, i think maybe i sent him my demo reel or something and uh i don't know if i did an audition or not did i send you an audition jerry okay so i auditioned for the part and uh, i got it and Based on my resume, because I had a, a lot of experience mm -hmm. prior to this, uh, he asked me if I would uh, kind of help him reach out to people and, and in the casting process, maybe talk to some people I knew in the industry to see if they would are willing to support the film. And uh, so that's what I did. I started just shooting messages out and making posts or whatever. And uh, it got to the point where I was kind of, you know, helping so much that he said, well, why don't you be a producer, you know? Yeah. So... I kind of jumped on that and helped him with whatever he needed, you know, behind the scenes to try to make the film happen. So Awesome. Okay, now what made you want to apply for the role of Pastor Brian? One reason was because of the age range. Okay. A lot of the characters were uh, 20s, 30s age uh -huh. range. I just turned 50. <laughs> so uh. Uh, I was there were very few roles that I would be eligible for in the film. Pastor Brian was maybe 45 to 50 age range. Okay. So I thought that would be cool. I'd never played a, a pastor before. Mm -hmm. uh, and I also really wanted to work in a, uh, like a Christian or faith-based film. Mm -hmm. I, I had applied for The Chosen, for Vindication, and I, I couldn't get any of those, uh, probably because there's so many locals up around the DFW area yeah. that they're just, you know, they're not bringing people from outside, or maybe they are, but... I never got that, so when I saw this one, I said, hey, maybe this is an opportunity to do a, a faith-based film. So, uh -huh. again, I auditioned for it, and uh, I got the role and did my first pastor role, and it was really cool, really fun. That's so awesome. Now, you mentioned that you had a demo reel, so clearly you have some mm -hmm. acting experience. What's your acting history about? Like all the, the projects that I've done? Yeah, like what's your, I didn't, I didn't, I personally didn't even realize that was one of your, already a lane that you were running in. Yeah, um. Well, you know, I, I can start all the way back and just kind of give you some history. Sure. Uh, right after high school, I joined the Navy. Mm -hmm. And but and I wanted to be an actor even when I was little. Like, especially when I saw the first Top Gun movie. I think that was in 86 it came out. Uh -huh. I said, oh, my God, I, I wish I could do that. You know, it was my favorite movie I'd ever seen. And I said, God, I would love to be an actor. That must be so much fun mm -hmm. being able to pr portray these these characters and, and tell the story. Uh -huh. And uh, <clears throat> But I ended up joining the Navy after high school. And that was partly due to Top Gun. Oh, you know, oh, right. Because I watched it, you know, from the time it came out all the way until I graduated from high school. But uh, I was in the Navy, and I stayed for 20 years. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have an opportunity to do any acting or anything related to, the, you know, filmmaking. Uh, so when I retired in 2011, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I moved back to my hometown in Texas, and... It took me a little while. I went. I went back to college for process operating, uh, because everybody told me if you want to make money here, you got to go work at a plant. I've heard so that. Yeah. The guys make money, so I said, "Ooh, I'll do that," and then stay and have two retirements. You know. Uh -huh. uh, <clears throat> so I, I started college, and luckily, about six months in, I got hired at a, a rubber plant, and I went to work there. Uh, the the job. I had a couple heat strokes in the Navy, so I wasn't able to stay in that position mm. because it was so intensely hot. 
in the building that we work in, mm -hmm. uh, basically drying, drying and compacting rubber into square bales. Oh, wow. So it's pretty rough. <clears throat> After that, I worked at a couple of other plants, uh, decided I didn't really care for, for that lifestyle and the, the shift work and all that. So I decided just to stay retired. Mm. So I think uh, 2016 is when I said I'm just going to stay retired and you know go do my thing. I, I need to be rich, <laughs> whatever. <you know? laughs> and in 2017, when Hurricane Harvey hit, mm. uh, me and my family evacuated, and I met a guy who had done some stunt work and uh, a few background roles, mm -hmm. and he had pictures with all these celebrities. And I said, "Oh my God, how did you get those?" Pictures, you know, I always wanted to be an actor and, you know, do you know somebody? And, of course, he, he knew a casting company uh, somewhere near Dallas, and he gave me the, an email address, and I wrote him, and they said, hey, if you want to start doing some extra background roles and ease your way in the, into the industry, then mm -hmm. we've got a film that's that we've got four days left to shoot. You're welcome to come join us. So I did that, and it was the first time I'd been on a movie set before, and I was blown away. Wow. I said, oh, my God, this is incredible. I, this is what I want to do, you know, but be down there <laughs> yeah. know, where the principal actors are. So <clears throat> I did uh, I did quite a few background roles. And, and a lot of the people I met there told me that this is kind of how you, uh, what is the old saying? You pay your way. Pay your dues. Pay your dues into it. You know, you mm -hmm. don't just jump straight into a, you're a Hollywood celebrity. Yeah. You know, you do the work and, and get to know the industry first mm -hmm. before you just jump out there and look like a fool. Sure. So I did a lot of that, a lot of different background roles. <clears throat> uh, I did a background role in the movie Green Book. Okay. Uh, with Viggo Mortensen. Uh huh. Uh, I got to meet him, which was blew my mind. I'm a big fan of his. Uh, there's a movie called The Dirt. It's about Motley Crue. Mm -hmm. I was a background on that. I got to meet all those you know actors. I was uh, <clears throat> I played a uh, a Navy captain in NCIS New Orleans. Very appropriate. Uh, I think I think I did eight episodes of that, maybe. Wow. But uh, that was really fun. That was Got probably like Scott Bakula. that was probably like the full experience almost. I mean, eight episodes. That means you were a regular, if you will. Yeah, definitely a regular. That's awesome. And, and I did a couple of other roles in it where <clears throat> now the, playing the Navy captain was more prominent. You know, I was more featured uh, on camera mm -hmm. in those and some other ones. I play an FBI agent where I'm just in a group of six other FBI agents arresting mm -hmm. somebody or whatever. But I did that. So <clears throat> that was a lot of good experience to lead up. And I caught a very, very lucky break. And this is a, a, an entire other story uh -huh. about how I got this. I got cast in the movie Greyhound starring Tom Hanks. Okay. And uh, I had a principal speaking role. That was my, that was my very first major motion picture Jeff speaking company. role. Mm -hmm. It was in the movie Greyhound. And, I mean, I'm still, it's still surreal to me Aww. that I was in that movie. But it was a lot of fun. We, I think I was there for about four months shooting that. Wow, so. that's amazing. Was that hard on the family? Like, how does the family feel about? Well, <clears throat> um, my kids were all grown and gone, so uh -huh. it's pretty, it was just my wife and I. And she would drive to the set and stay with me, like, on, on the weekend if I wasn't uh -huh. shooting. Mm -hmm. Or whatever days I wasn't shooting, she would come and stay there with me. So, And then sometimes I would drive. To, you know where she was and we'd go back and forth so Aww. it really wasn't that bad but so that's kind of like the glamorous retired life right there really it, it is that that's a dream you know that's amazing yeah. i'm so thankful for your sake that you were like after paying your dues of like taking care of the family and doing the navy and serving our country thank you very much that uh you're able to act out literally in yeah. your dream and see yeah, exactly. it come to fruition so now back to this then so really i can see how you would be such an asset to Jerry and the team as well as one of the producers. So what do you feel like is one of your favorite things that you do as a producer? Or what do you do as a producer? I mean, you kind of mentioned like setting up the interviews or the auditions and yeah. emailing people so, and stuff. Uh, I mean, the role of a producer in a film, like if you go out to you know, Hollywood or to Paramount and you're a producer there, uh, that's really different from when you're doing a small independent film. Mm -hmm. Uh, you're kind of a jack of all trades, sure. With the title of a producer, yeah. So, <clears throat> to, to you know, to say I'm, I produced the film, I, I pretty much just piggybacked on Jerry. You know, Jerry, what do you need? What do you need for me to do today? You know, where do we need this? I'll ask questions and I'll just go out and start doing. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, there, there's several other people. I'm not, you know, saying it was me. To, you know, I'm not taking all the credit, but sure. Um, 
I'm just kind of a whatever I can do to make this thing happen. Yeah. Make it go smoothly and make it successful on the on the back end. Yeah. Well, one of the things that you did that we appreciated, we were all my family was all extras. You made all of us IMDb pages, right? Oh, yeah, sure. So, right. a couple of weeks ago, actually last week, we were at Urban Air with my kids and Shiloh who was on uh, he was in the restaurant scene mm -hmm. as an extra. Um, he's very excited that he has an IMDb page now, thanks Is to he? you. And so, uh, Sean, the movie man from Fox or some kind of local news, whatever, he was there filming a commercial. So we asked our kids if they'd like to be in the commercial. And Shallow goes, well, yeah, I'm an actor. And so Sean looks at me, he's like, is that true? I said, well, he has an IMDb page. So thank you for making that moment for no. Shiloh. He feels very official. <laughs> yeah, and that's the thing. I remember when, when I got my IMDb page created for the first time, mm -hmm. It, it like changed everything, my whole attitude. Everything. It makes it feel official. Sure. Like yeah. even though I had one background credit, <laughs> you know, I asked uh, uh, one of the other people. I said, "Does this mean I'm an actor now?" And they're like, "It sure does." Oh. Gus, let's go. You know, <laughs> it, it kind of gives you it gives you more motivation to. Yeah. You know, well, keep, confidence keep keeps. Going. Yeah. It's, it's, I it's love that. Cool. Okay, so now since you've seen a lot, you've been on a lot of sets and stuff. What would you say was one of your favorite scenes in this movie? scenes in this movie. I'm going to tell you what the most emotional scene was. But no spoilers. It, it might be my favorite as well. But my the there was an emotional scene. It cuz I and I don't cry during movies or tear up or get emotional or anything. This made me emotional. Jerry sent me you know separately just sent me that shot, that scene. Mm -hmm. And I was like blown away. It's like, "Oh, I'm choking up over here." Wow. <clears throat> so there's a scene where Two of the actors are at a piano, mm -hmm. and that's that's all I can give you for now. Sorry. <laughs> <clears throat> and once you get the context of the film and what happens, mm -hmm. you understand why that scene is so emotional. But it was incredibly set up, incredibly shot by mm. our DP. The, the set, the music, and all that. Uh, it was just incredible. The whole scene and the atmosphere. It was. So, and I, I got to be there while he shot it, so it was even, even better. That's awesome. I think that's probably my favorite, favorite scene besides the one of me. <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> now, was there anything super funny? I've heard from everybody that it seems that now I've gotten to interview everybody. By the time people are seeing yours, it's <clears throat> you're one of the first interviews they'll be seeing. But everybody talks about how much fun everybody had cutting up on the on the set and everything mm -hmm. together. So, is there a funny moment that struck you that you were like, "Oh, I love these people." Uh, Every uh, every time Lakin opened her mouth, was, uh, <laughs> that was the funniest time of the film. Uh -huh. No, Lakin, she's funny. She does some wild stuff. I've got some pictures I took where <laughs> I don't even know if I could show them, but they were so funny. Really? Um, <clears throat> there was a scene, um, maybe toward the middle. As a matter of fact, it was my uh, my uh, the first scene that I was in where okay. I was first revealed. Uh, as the pastor, <clears throat> and I, I come up and I'm talking to two of the actors, mm -hmm. and one, we're, as we shot this, one of the act, actors was supposed to come out at a certain time, but she was late, so I just stood there looking at the other actor, waiting for Jerry to tell us to reset, mm -hmm. and she thought we were just continuing, and so she thought I was... Uh, Stalling. What's the word she used? I can't remember ghosting her. Oh no! Maybe because I wasn't paying attention because I was supposed to interact with her at that time, but I wasn't. Uh -huh. I was just staring at the other actor, staying in character, and she's like, "Okay," and she's turned and awkwardly walked off. Uh -huh. And I felt bad too. I was like, "Oh God, I hope she's not mad." Thinking I like, you know, purposely just was like, "Mm mm." Uh huh. I'm not talking. To that you. doesn't end up in the movie, does it? Is it edited out, or do we get to watch it? No, it's a, it's in a blooper reel. <laughs> oh nice. You'll, you'll see it at some point uh -huh. when the blooper reel comes out. It's it's pretty fun. <laughs> okay, that's awesome. Yeah. So now, what would you say? Um, we'll take a closer look here at your personal life, then. Mm -hmm. And since you're one of our more seasoned cast and crew members, we'll say it like that. You, you have a lot guy. of wisdom. Your hair evidences the wisdom that you have, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, my wife lets me know about that. So you made mention that you were looking forward to playing the role of a pastor. It sounded like it was kind of a new endeavor. Mm -hmm. What did you draw out of that? You you also had shared with me off camera that. Uh, actors are always looking for their next challenge. Mm -hmm. So what kind of challenge did that present to you and how did you enjoy it? Yeah, it's a challenge um, in, in the aspect um, that I've never 
played a pastor before. Mm -hmm. Don't know if I can play a pastor, right? <laughs> <clears throat> like, what would that be like? I, I, you know, I've never been a pastor, and I'd never done any research, mm -hmm. you know, on the skills that you need to sort of play a pastor. So accepting that's a challenge. It challenges you to do some research, you know, to watch some videos of, of preachers. And, and mm -hmm. there was an actual actual preacher who I was kind of modeled after. So I watched a lot of videos of him uh -huh. doing his preaching. That kind of helped me get in to get some context to that character. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but in my head, I'm picturing you go, and uh, we yeah. are here together. Yeah, so in, but in this movie, it really wasn't that hard because the character's not that nuanced, right? So okay. there's only a few scenes uh, with the, the pastor, you know, speaking and, and mm -hmm. doing stuff. So it was easier to just kind of, you know, do the performance. I didn't have to do a lot of different things. So there was some time for I was on the stage actually preaching, and uh, that was pretty easy just from watching, mm. uh, you know, the preacher and how his mannerisms, how he moved. Yeah. It was pretty easy to reproduce that on the stage. Um, but, it, you know, the dialogue with, between the pastor and the actors, that was a little bit tougher because there was more evolved, evolved. There was more involved in that. Uh -huh. uh, you know, there was a lot of emotion and expressions and, and things that you had to try to capture mm. and express to the audience so they kind of knew the, uh, how, you know, how the scene was structured. So. so now you can check another one off the list. Boom, done it. Done. Okay, you played <coughs> the pastor. Do you remember what your sermon was about? Okay, so <clears throat> there's a scene where I'm on the stage and I'm, I'm preaching and I'm doing a lot of, you know, hand gestures and manner you know different mannerisms uh -huh. but it was um it was a no no sound scene right uh -huh. so it just has music over it uh it's kind of i think it's a flashback scene matter of fact so you just see me doing the mannerisms but you don't hear what i'm saying but you see my mouth moving uh -huh. so <clears throat> i had to come up with something to say to you know to make my mouth move oh no and i was uh i believe i was asking people uh who who has seen the most recent star wars movie all right, you, what did you think about that? Wasn't it <laughs> such a great movie? I love the part where, you know, and so, but my mannerisms look like I'm preaching, preaching. the gospel, uh -huh. but I'm talking about movies and stuff. It was, <laughs> it was comical. And I don't That's know, I think weird. we might have that in a, uh, in a uh, gag reel. Blooper reel as well. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so then now that you're basically living the dream, you're retired, mm -hmm. and you've gotten to act on a number of things, be a regular on a show, now you've helped produce a local feature film. Mm -hmm. What is the rest of your dream? Like, you still have many days left, hopefully. And so, what would be your life's dream? So, uh, the, the dream is, simply put, just to stay in, in the filmmaking community. Mm -hmm. Continue to act and be a part of, uh, of filmmaking. Uh -huh. and, and mainly, I'm an actor. I, I don't really have a desire to direct or, or even really produce. That mm -hmm. was a favor for Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really want to be behind the camera. I just want to act and then you know, going about my day and do my thing. I don't want to, it to turn into a, a job where I'm, you know, tied to it. Then it won't be that fun anymore, you uh -huh. know. I do it because I love it, and it's a lot of fun, and I have a passion for it. Okay. So if it becomes, a, you know, a chain and an anchor, then it's going to, I'm going to lose interest. But <clears throat> um, a lot of people have been telling me to go get an agent. Because mm -hmm. I, I got cast in the, the Tom Hanks movie without an agent, which is very difficult to do. It's, mm -hmm. it's not very common. So uh, to get other movies like that, Hollywood movies, mm -hmm. I would have to get an agent, which I don't want to get an agent because then you become obligated to the agent, you know, True. to accept roles, perform, make money, or they just drop you from their roster. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to be obligated. I kind of want to do, you know, what I want to do, when mm -hmm. I want to do it, and all, all that stuff. So it, even though it sounds kind of selfish, it's just kind of where I am in life, mm -hmm. you know. I don't want to be obligated to something. Uh, so in the meantime, I'm enjoying doing a lot of work with the local filmmaking uh, in the Southeast Texas area. Yeah. I, I think for the last year, maybe, uh, I focused mostly on that, mm -hmm. just doing local stuff. There's a there's a lady named Penny Lulu in Orange. I've done a lot of work with her. She's constantly uh, entering film races, uh, making short films, entering film festivals. She's wow. got a whole bag of awards from uh, films she's done. So I've been helping her a lot with her films. I just finished a film with her uh -huh. uh, doing a lead character. And, uh, of course, hopefully I'm going to continue with Jerry because he's got some 
big projects on the horizon. Yes, he I does. Mean, I don't know if you've heard about them, but I mean, just a small description of them, just your heart starts beating faster, like, oh, wow. I hope I get to be a part no of this. No kidding. You know, I'm going to jump on this train. So. Okay, well, so that brings me to my last question is what kind of role, and I'm going to put this out there because I was once told that people in general, humankind, really loves to help make people's dreams come true. So I'm going to put this out there in case the right person hears it, <laughs> okay. but is there a kind of role or a type of role that has been like, I would love, like this would be the ultimate. I want to, I want to be in this kind of a role, maybe a <laughs> Top Gun. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, oh no. You know, it, I think any of the, the big films, mm -hmm. you know, the Top Guns, the Avengers, uh, the ones that are um, trilogies or, or Star Wars, the big, you know, big movies that just make people famous and then next thing you know, everybody wants them in their film. That's kind of the dream, you know. Uh -huh. I mean, I think every actor would love to, to get thrust into that. Yeah. But then, you know, of course, there's a... a there's a darker side of that life that comes with it too. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I want that. Mm -hmm. uh, it's there's got to be a trade-off somewhere. But uh, <clears throat> what was the question? Again? <laughs> what is the what is the I'm ultimate? Sure. What's the kind of role that would be? Oh, the kind of, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, here's another funny story. Uh -huh. uh, I did a web web uh, series. Uh, there's a YouTube channel called Vid Chronicles. Okay. I did 132 episodes of little short films mm -hmm. they're supposed to be like kind of inspirational they basically they show something somebody does something bad and then you give like some a moral lesson at the end of it right kind of darman esque <clears throat> yeah yeah it's, mm -hmm. it's very very similar to, to darman uh, but i did a bunch of episodes of that and there were several that i played a bad guy mm -hmm. and all i heard was man you make a really good bad guy oh no oh you nailed that bro and, and <clears throat> in real life i'm not mean or bad at all but uh -huh. on camera Man, I'm a really must be your icy blues. They just guy. come through. I don't know. <laughs> so I started thinking, man, I would, I could probably, I would probably do really well as like a lead villain mm. in some movie where I'm just a horrible, terrible, just you know, awful guy. Uh huh. Where I'm just you know killing everyone. Oh man. That's like, that's me. You're like that's the dream. <laughs> yeah. Make I don't me know where the that bad guy. From, but, but yeah. <laughs> So apparently I, I, I do a really good mean. Even my wife said, oh, yeah, you you do great as a turd. <laughs> well, on that Can note. I that on the, uh, <laughs> in the blooper reel, maybe. <laughs> she really said butthole, but I don't want to. Oh, okay. You can cut that out, Jerry. That's hilarious. Yeah. Okay, well, listen, thank you so much for sharing your story and kind of your journey and what all what all that contributed to this movie. And thank you for the role that you played, especially producing it and working to serve Jerry and the team and make everything go smoother. So thank you for all of that. Thank you. Very Pleasure being here. Absolutely. Thanks for joining me for another inside look with the cast and crew of Studio 220 Films movie, The First Step. And make sure and head on over to the website where you can get connected and follow them on social media. You can also get on the email list so that you are in the loop about what's going on in any future productions that they are putting together that you could potentially get involved in. And you can also find out how you can give and support the dream of Studio 220 Films. Otherwise, we will see you in the next interviews. Bye.